drowning. I had to save him. This obsession with humans has to stop. Look around. It's not our world, son. What's up guys? So the sequel is here. This is the Miku KP2 Smart LED Projector. Bringing us a brand new design, a new custom Linux OS, and some interesting features to go with it. The KP2 is capable of projecting a massive 240 inch full HD home cinema experience combined with legit Netflix HD certification and lots more. Now, first of all, inside the box, you will find a user manual, power cable, a rather large power supply, and I'll give you a close up of the voltage information. This also comes with a rather nice full featured remote control. You can see you've got shortcuts for Netflix, YouTube, Prime Video, and even a web browser. The remote is powered by two AAA batteries, which are not included in the box. Now the projector is made completely from plastic and the sides have this rather nice white matte finish. On top, you've got a single power button. On the front, you can see your lens, infrared, and a large grill, could be for a speaker. If we have a look at the back of the projector, you've got a power socket, USB 2 port for multimedia playback, HDMI port so you can hook up your favorite console or TV box. We have another infrared port for the remote control and also an audio jack so you can hook up your favorite headphones or your own speaker system. Now if we keep going on this side there is nothing and that brings us back to the front of the projector and here is a quick look at the bottom where you can see we do have a tripod thread so you can hook this up to a universal tripod or you can even ceiling mount it. Now let's quickly check out the specs. So this is an LED video projector. Lamp life is 30,000 hours. The OS is a custom Linux OS version 4.1.9. This projector does have legit Netflix HD certification. You've got five gigahertz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth version five. Brightness is 600 ANSI lumens, giving you a native 1920 by 1080 resolution. This projector does support autofocus and auto keystone correction and giving you a maximum optimal screen size of 240 inches. So I have the projector all set up and the first thing we're going to do is test out that fan noise. So standing right next to the projector, you can expect a fan noise of around 44 decibels. And if we move back one meter, the fan noise drops down to around 41 decibels. Okay, so we have the projector situated around two and a half meters away from the wall in front of us and we're projecting just over 90 inches. And just to add, we are projecting directly on a cream colored wallpaper. Here is your home screen. So we've got an interesting layout with all your applications at the top. Second two rows are recommendations for Netflix and open browser. At the top, we've got local date, time, Wi-Fi connection information, and then you've got inputs and settings. Now let's quickly go over the settings. You've got setup, under which you've got OSD language. I'll give you guys a quick look at the languages and there is quite a few languages in this. Wow. Okay, let's go back. Time setup, screensaver, sleep timer, auto sleep, USB auto upgrade, internet update check, and reset to defaults. We've got picture mode and there are some presets you can play with. It's currently set to custom. So you can customize things to your own personal preference. You've got cinema, sports, vivid, high bright, standard, and back to custom. I'm gonna leave it on custom at the moment. For audio, you can adjust the bass and treble. You can turn surround sound on and off. It's off by default. And you've got some presets that you can play with. So we've got user, standard, vivid, sports, movie, music, and news. We've got digital output mode. So we've got auto, PCM, Dolby Digital Audio and Dolby Digital Audio Plus. And if we go back, you've got Dialog Enhancements. It's currently turned off, but you can switch that on as well. So quite a few options for your picture and audio. We've got Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. I'll quickly show you that we are connected to a five gigahertz Wi-Fi connection. Now projection orientation can be changed from four options. You then have Keystone Correction, which is set to automatic. But if you wanted, you could fine tune each corner yourself. So you've got four point correction as well. Furthermore, you've got digital zoom. So if your wall was not big enough and the image overlapped the entire wall, you could zoom the image right down to 50%. But I'm gonna leave ours on 100% as we don't have that issue. Focus adjustment, we've got autofocus. So every time you move the projector, which I'm about to do, the autofocus kicks in. So that's the autofocus. As you can see, autofocus is working great. 
Quick mention of the remote control. This is a Bluetooth remote. You can be anywhere in the room and the remote works super responsive. The remote control does have shortcuts for Netflix, YouTube, Prime and open browser. And you have lots of other functionality on the remote, including manual focus. So if you think the focus is not right, you can fine tune things yourself. And I'm gonna test out one of the shortcuts right now. So let's start off with YouTube. So if I open up YouTube, straight away, YouTube is loading. Maximum streaming resolution on YouTube is 1080p60 with HDR. Okay, just gonna pause the video right there. Wow, that's a stunning image. Have a look at that for detail. Notice that the volume is only on 36. I could take that volume bar to 100. Um, it's already loud enough for me at 36. So impressive sounds, impressive, powerful speakers built into this system. Now let's have a closer look at this parrot. So the parrot head, you can see close up, does not distort at all. Really nice image, no pixelation at all. All, all four corners are looking crisp and sharp. Projection quality is impressive, guys. Now what I'm gonna do is switch the light on so we can see how the projection quality looks in the daytime. Everything is still visible on the screen. So yes, you could use this projector in the daytime. So here is some daytime video footage. So my studio lights are on and you can still see everything on that projector. So you can pretty much use this projector at any time you like. But if you really want to take advantage of a home cinema projector, you need to switch that light right off. Wow, see the difference. Now let's go ahead and play a few more trailers. You must ain't got no kinfolk around these parts. All I had was my sister. She was the only one ever. Today, the artificial intelligence created to protect us detonated a nuclear warhead in Los Angeles. Getting you out of here, okay? This obsession with humans has to stop. I just want to know more about them. All you do is play video games with some crazy dreams of racing cars. Dad, you're the one that told us to always do something we love. To kill all of you and then to leave. And now, with all our guns out, I'll manage. I love you, Mikey. But I can rewrite the script and change the outcome. I'm not going to lose her again. So this projector is Netflix certified. So we're about to test that out right now. I'm opening up Netflix. And as you can see, it does indeed play Netflix at 1080p with HDR. Pretty awesome. This is obviously a massive, massive accomplishment. But at this stage of your career... We are now going to switch to HDMI source. I have connected my PlayStation 5. So PlayStation 5 display information. It's 1920 by 1080 60 hertz max and uh, HDR is not supported. So let's go ahead and play a few games.
come at any time. So 31 total strikes have landed for Rihanna. Oh, that's nice, right? Oh. So there you have it guys, that was the Mikul KP2 home cinema projector. Now let's jump straight to the caveats I found whilst testing this projector. Fan noise is on the louder side at 46 decibels. Also I found that HDR is not supported via HDMI source, so that means no HDR gaming when connecting a game console. Built in speakers are quite loud, but not the best quality, and the presets don't make much of a difference either. I like the size, I like the design, and I also like that this does support 1080p HDR streaming on Netflix, YouTube, and Amazon Prime Video. You have an easy to use interface and the included remote control is responsive. And to give you an idea of how this projector ranks in my top projector chart for 2023, and all the projectors on this chart are ranked by overall projection quality and features. So you can see that the Mikul KP2 has achieved itself position 14 on this chart. And you can see just above, KP1 is actually within the top 10. So that tells you the difference between the KP1 and the KP2. Meanwhile, if you want to check out our latest charts, head over to chickstech.com and read them at your leisure and completely free of charge. I guess on this occasion, the sequel is not as good as the original. The Mikul KP1 was certainly a better all-round projector. I guess I just expected it to be a lot better, especially with the specifications and the 600 ANSI lumens. Now, with all that being said, I will leave the links in the description box so you guys can check this out for yourselves. That's all for this video. Don't forget to like and sub. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.